Hello, everyone, and thanks for tuning in again. Um, today, I want to go over, uh, do a brief walkthrough of my uh, uh, Palomino HS750 that I picked up uh, a couple weeks ago, and kind of do a quick walkthrough of the truck, my F250 as well, 2020 F250. So let's go ahead and just start on this end. Uh, let's start with some of these controls here, some of these items. Uh, this is the battery disconnect switch. This will disconnect the house battery um, from any of the uh, uh, users on board the camper, like uh, lights, um, ventilation fans, furnace fan, uh, things of that nature. In the on position, the battery is hot and the circuits are hot and your lights will work off battery um, the circulation fans will work, furnace fan, things of that nature. So in the, also in the on position, I should add, when you're going down the road and you're charging the truck, the, the, the alternator's turning, the truck will also charge the house battery in the on position. Now in the off position, like in storage, uh, I'm going to have the camper off the truck for a period of time. We don't want to discharge the battery completely. So we'll turn the disconnect switch to off. And what that's gonna allow us to do is disconnect the battery from all of the users on board the, uh, the camper, such as, again, lights, uh, ventilation fans, uh, furnace fan, um, and so on. Now in the off position, one, one of the options I wanted to have uh, 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 my camper equipped with is a solar panel. So I've got a solar panel on top. And the cool thing about this is when the camper is in storage, and the disconnect switches it off, the solar panel will still charge the battery. So that's something to keep in mind. I normally keep it in on when it's on the truck, just because when you, when I drive, you know, we drive again, when you drive the truck, you're gonna give the battery a charge. Now here's an external charging port. Um, you can charge the battery from an external source, uh, generator or one of those uh, like DeWalt power packs, those jump start. Uh, Jumpstart uh, boxes, power packs. And this is your seven way cord. What this cord does is it just plugs in right here. And it's a standard uh, trailer, uh, uh, trailer seven way cord. Plug it in here and it runs along down the side, inside the uh, camper here, or in between the uh, camper and the pickup box. Comes down here and then you'll simply just plug that in uh, to the trailer plug trailer receptacle um, that you would any other, like if you're towing a, a, an RV, and what that, an RV trailer or any utility trailer, and what that's going to do is not only is that going to be the source of power for charging the house battery with the truck engine alternator, but it's also going to power our running lights, clearance lights, both in the back. And we've got two up front there. So that's what that's for. Um, something I want to touch on real quick here. Uh, these are manual crack crank jacks right now. And I got to tell you, it is a pain to hand crank these things down. I, ha I, I have been using a couple of DeWalt drills and you can fit the socket over the crank and then run them up and down that way. That works. But one of the, the, the other option, one of the other options I wanted with this camper was electric jacks. Now right here is where the electric jack would plug in. And I was told that the, uh, the electric jacks are on back order. And so they're part of the package that I got, but they're just not in yet. So hopefully they come in soon. Uh, uh, Gibbs RV down in Waco assures me that they'll be in here in the next couple of weeks, hopefully. Um, yeah, so we can stop with that manual cranking. Um, as we come around this side, we've got, and this is a really cool feature. I've not seen in an RV before. This is a, a on-demand water heater. So used to be back in the days of RVing with my grandparents and parents, um, we had a, about a five gallon water tank and, you know, uh, they, they tend to corrode over time and um, start leaking after a few years. But this is really cool. I actually put this to the test um, this last weekend 
uh, when I was doing a little camping and um, it's really great. You just, it's propane fired. And so you just turn the switch on and uh, make sure the propane gas is on and we'll see that on the other side there. And then there's a control box inside the, the camper I'll show you here in a second. And I'm telling you, instant hot water. As soon as that flame lights, you turn the faucet on and it was instant hot water. Pretty cool, pretty cool. All right, and here we have our uh, uh, fresh water. This is where you're gonna fill the fresh water tank uh, with potable water, of course, right? And the fresh water tank is located inside the camper. Um, I'll actually pull the cover off and show you when we get inside, but it's down in that area. And it's a 21 gallon uh, fresh water. So if you're off boondocking, um, you wanna carry a little water with you. And yeah, that'll eventually go back on there. So yeah, you can just fill it with a garden hose. Um, here's your city water connection. So this just pops off. And then your city water, you can uh, attach, like if you're parked in your driveway even, you can attach the garden hose um, here. And, or a lot of campgrounds have, uh, you know, uh, full hookups or at least water and electricity. So you can have constant water supply there. But keep in mind, if you have constant water supply, you're likely not going to have, unless you have full hookups, you, you, you may not have a full sewer hookup. So we're going to talk about the holding tanks here in a second. Uh, that's your city water connection. So you can bypass the water tank, the fresh water tank, and just draw straight from uh, another external water source. One thing I would recommend is uh, having a um, pressure regulator an inline pressure regulator that you can buy at any RV store, uh, dealership, or uh, probably Cabela's, um, Academy, those types of places. But an inline pressure regulator to make sure that the water source could be, the pressure of the water source could be too high for the uh, uh, plumbing inside the camper. So uh, that way the regulator regulates about 40, 45 PSI. And this, this is your sink drain. So on the Palomino HS750, uh, this, the kitchen sink actually drains right out here. So again, we're gonna talk about, uh, we're gonna talk about water tanks or holding tanks here in a second. Um, so you have a gray tank and a black tank. I think we all know what the black tank is for. Um, and we, the gray tank is for shower, black tank is for toilet, of course. This is where the sink drain is going to, uh, the, the sink water is going to drain. So what you can do is you can, you know, attach any standard hose fitting and then run that hose uh, to an external tank. Um, a lot of campgrounds, uh, state parks especially, I, I, I know, uh, there's a fine. It's like 500 bucks if they catch you draining any gray water on the ground. So keep that in mind. It's uh, best just to drain it into an external tank. All right, and then here we've got our uh, furnace uh, uh, exhaust, furnace vent. And something a, a, a buddy of mine pointed out, and it made a lot of sense, I never thought about this, but especially here in Texas, and probably good to do something of the same on the uh, uh, water heater door as well, is to put uh, some screen, some type of screen over, over these openings um, to allow the uh, furnace to continue to vent, but uh, mud daubers and hornets and all kinds of other uh, creatures probably find that uh, to be a very comfortable home. So good advice. Let's see. And here we've got uh, some external um, 120 outlet. So if you're hooked up to power and power is going to be right here, and we'll talk about that here in a second. But if you're hooked up to power, you'll have, uh, you can, you know, run, uh, gosh, I don't know. Uh, power drills or jigsaws or whatever you can think of, uh, hair dryers, whatever you got. Okay, and then moving on here, we've got a small storage compartment here. And what I really love about this are these slam latches. Like I remember uh, RVs of the past had some of the cheap latches that broke or bent and didn't function properly you know, after a short while. But these are great because you can just kind of slam them shut, heavy duty. Nice thick doors too, might add. And another cool thing 
is the magnetic hold open latch. So this is a, you know, for a small camper, I got to say, this is a pretty roomy, uh, roomy unit. This is just kind of a storage for, this is the electrical cord. Uh, here is the fresh water hose. And here's this regulator I was talking about. This goes, of course, in line, and we'd attach this right here to our city city water. Well, actually, this would this would go to the water source and then the other end of the hose to the city water connection. That way you make sure the water pressure stays at or below 45 PSI. Um, and also, I should add, this is a pass-through cabinet. So you can actually access the inside of the camper through that door, and we'll take a look at that when we get inside. Uh, this is your 30-amp power cord. Now, one thing to keep in mind is when you're when you're running on battery, if you're boondocking, if you're out boondocking, in other words, you're not connected to any kind of external water or power source, you can't run things like the air conditioner, the rooftop air conditioner. Um, this one thing won't run on the uh, uh, batteries. But uh, here in Texas, um, <laughs> air conditioning is kind of a must. Uh, that's why it's an optional item I uh, chose to have on my camper. But anyway, this is the external uh, power cord. This end here, it's pretty cool. This is going to hook up right here. We're going to open that. And then this goes right in there. And what's cool is it's got a, a, a screw on keeper so that it doesn't, you know, get pulled out or some, you know, uh, fall out or anything like that. And then this, of course, this end goes on the park side. So again, if you're at a campground that has full water, full electric, um, it, it, it's, it's a nice thing to have. And especially if you can have full uh, uh, sewer as well. Uh, this is an adapter that um, if all you have is a standard 110 outlet style plug or 120, um, you can simply do something kind of like that attach that and then you've got a uh, you can you can plug into a standard outlet uh, this is a 30 amp hose it's rated at 30 amps uh, most RV parks um, campgrounds run 30 and 50 amps some of your bigger RVs uh, fifth wheels motorhomes class A motorhomes things like that that may have multiple air conditioning units um, they're gonna run about 50 amps so uh, just make sure, you know, whatever uh, RV park you happen to be um, uh, staying at, make sure they have the right rated amp uh, power source for you. Okay, and then, of course, we have cable and satellite. Uh, if, you know, if you feel the need to watch TV when you're camping. Um, and then, of course, an outdoor shower. Take a look at that real quick, maybe. Okay, there we go. All right, so yeah, this is kind of a handy thing. A Out, little outdoor shower. Um, you know, if you need to rinse off your feet or whatever after wading in the, in the lake or whatever you uh, happen to be doing, or if you actually want to shower outside, it's all good. There's no rules here. All right, let's see. Let's move on. Uh, here's the uh, vent for the oven, by the way. Uh, well, the stovetop. There is no oven on this particular uh, model. And I, I, one thing I really love is the frameless windows. I wanted to add that. That's, uh, yeah, those are, those are pretty sharp looking. Nice tint on them, too.